Welcome to part 4 of my tutorial. In the last videos I showed you how we mix our textures together to get a realistic landscape. This time it's about creating a better overview and how we can adjust our shader more quickly. We start again here, we notice no tree, and I will show you in this tutorial how you can use groups in a smart way to customize your shader even faster. We have already connected the scale factor so that you can control it from the outside and of course you can connect more sockets. Firstly, we create a new plane with Shift A, select Mesh and then Plane. We move it along the Y axis, just a little bit, press S and type in 10. We have now enlarged our mesh 10 times. Now we apply our corrections. Okay. Now we also give it our landscape material, which we can choose here or on the side here, whichever is faster for you. However, our material does not work in the same way as here, because we have not created any color attributes. But we can do that, of course, and adjust it with just a few clicks. We are not going to do that now, because I just want to show you the effect quickly. Firstly, we make this material independent, so we don't change it on our other mesh. We just add groups to the name here. With Ctrl and Shift pressed, click on the node to display it. We also connect the displacement. And now we only have the forest floor texture displayed here. Now let's make it bigger. It's quite simple. We mark it all and press 5. And if we click on this, we also create an independent group so we don't change it in the other shader. Click on this and go into the group. What we now create here is an RGB curves node. This allows us to change the brightness of the texture if we want to adjust it, because sometimes added textures doesn't match with the others. We want to create some variation now so that it doesn't look so unnatural. For this we need a noise node which goes here, then we add a color ramp that goes here, and a math node, which we set to multiply. Now we connect the three nodes and see this black and white noise again. We already know this from the last videos. We can adjust everything on the noise as we wish. Scale, for example, to 15. And of course, we can also combine these values with the group input as we have done here. Now we can change the size out here because we have connected it like this. We can also separate it again, then the input would be gone. Here you can see the input and the output and manage them. We connect the noise scale for example. Now we give it a name so we know which value we control. If we now leave the group, we can see that we can edit the value from here. This allows us to connect nodes and adjust them more quickly. If we now take our noise texture as a factor, we see that it doesn't get dark everywhere, but only where the mask is white. Maybe we set the roughness a little higher, so that we have a more natural gradient. And if we display this now, we can already see a small difference and more variation. The texture becomes lighter and darker in places, so it doesn't look so generated. Of course, you can also do the same thing with roughness. To do this, we simply copy it and combine it with the same mask without creating a new one. Then we can see that we also have differences here in how much the surface reflects. Let's change the curve a little here. Keep in mind, the darker the texture, the more reflective it is. We can now also connect the math node here and control the intensity of our adjustments from the outside. From here we can now easily control the size and intensity without having to go into the group every time. We can also copy the mask here and adapt it to other nodes and add further inputs and outputs. Let's call this amount for example. To make the surface look a little more realistic, we also need to get rid of the tiles. I will drag this over here first and then I will show you. 
if we switch to the top view by pressing the 7 key, we can see the clear patterns that repeat themselves. The smaller we display the texture, the more often it repeats and the more visible it becomes. If we enlarge the texture again, it does not repeat itself and it looks good at first. But by putting it on a larger surface here, we have to break up the tiles. There are many ways to do this, but I simply use this add-on here. It costs 10 bucks on Blender Market, but often makes our work much easier. I can definitely recommend it and I use it all the time. We just have to activate Uniform Patterns and click on Anti Tile. This has definitely helped to prevent the textures from repeating itself over and over again. The nodes have shifted a bit here, let me bring it back in position. Alright. With these nodes here we can control if we want to adjust the size of the tiles or the texture itself. I think it looks good the way it is. What we do next is switch to edit mode and select everything by pressing A, right click on it, then choose subdivide and let's just type in 50. Then we add a displacement modifier, create a new texture for it and name it landscape noise. I will just do this quickly so that the ground isn't just flat. Here we select clouds and change the size. We can't go any further than 2, but we can type in higher values, for example 5. Then right click on the mesh and click on shade smooth. You can already see that the floor now looks a little more exciting than when it is simply flat. For the micro displacements, we add a subdivision modifier, set it to simple and activate adaptive subdivision. This is too strong now, so let's click on this, go back to our shader and maybe set the displacement to 0.3. Let's have a look on the difference here. Now we definitely have a bit more detail in the landscape, but of course there's even less in the viewport than in the final render. Now we have a little more options for inputs to our group and can connect even more sockets. The more sockets we add, the more flexible our texture gets. If you want to see your micro displacements better, you can change the dicing rate of your adaptive subdivision modifier here. Let's set it to 2 and now we see more details. However, your viewport will of course be much slower. For example, if we change the size of the noise here, it will take a little longer to load because of the adaptive subdivision. That's why we deactivate the modifier for the viewport by clicking on this little button here. This way we can see our adjustments a little faster again, which makes it easier to control the group from here. But as I said, we can connect even more sockets and build our group step by step. For example, we create a hue saturation node and can edit it if necessary. We still need to connect the input here. The name actually fits. If we leave the group now, we can also control the value in this way. By holding down the shift key, the value changes less quickly and we can adjust it more precisely. Here we activate adaptive subdivision again and take a look at it. In the end, I customized all my groups and created a few more inputs. Of course, you can add more, but that's enough for now. We can see now that we have little more variation in our textures. The stone texture, for example, is a little more reflective in some places, which makes it more realistic. If we render this with adaptive subdivision, then we have even more detail, but I think it looks quite good as it is. Especially if you look at it from the distance, it's absolutely sufficient in my opinion. If we go into a group here, we can see that I have also added a contrast node after the displacement to change the strength of the displacement independently to the other textures. I have also connected normal strength so that I can control it from the outside. I just connected a few things that I want to adjust from time to time in the process. This is the node tree for the stone texture. I will show you this so that you can see better how I built it. We can adjust the shader quickly and apply it easily to other meshes. That way we have the base for our landscape with just a few clicks.
In the next tutorial, I will show you how we add our first assets and what methods we have for this. I hope you were able to learn a few things again and see you next time.